In this podcast, I will be talking to various sports personalities, coaches and experts to provide a regular dose of motivation and answer questions about the psychology in sports. Sportsmanship is not only about having a healthy body but also about having a winning mindset. Motivation helps to maintain, sustain and channel our behavior over an extended period of time and it can be applied in all areas of life that require commitment. So today we have with us Saurav Kothari, who is the world's biggest champion and Arjuna Awardee. He is the only cueist to have won an individual gold medal for India at the Asian Indoor Games. He was given the Sports Person of the Year award for Q Sports at the Times of India Sports Awards in 2020. He is only the third person in the history of Q Sports to have been national champion Asian champion and the world professional billiards champion so his extraordinary achievements have rightfully made him one of the india's brightest sports person from the modern era saurav thank you for joining us today thank you so much garma and thank you for that lovely introduction uh, you took me back in time when i had won all those medals and it's uh, really wonderful Yes. So, um, what, in your opinion, is one of the most important strength that a sports person must have in order to move up the scoreboard? Okay. So, yeah. lovely question, Garma. Uh, one of the most important strength that a sports pers- person should have, in my opinion, is uh, uh, will to win over fear. Uh, it could be fear of failure. It could be fear of uh, performance. and i think a lot of sports person they sort of fall back in their career because they can't win over this fear and uh, the fear is there with everyone honestly you know we when we go out to play international competitions uh, there, there's always going to be a certain amount of fear uh, of performing well uh, of of failure because you know there are a lot of people looking at our performances once you reach a certain stage there's expectations and uh, this fear is something that you know sort of just clutches on to you and it inhibits you to to put your best foot forward so in my opinion i think uh, if sports persons if everyone is unique every every human being is unique so uh, everyone has their own means of battling fear and of of coming out of the shackles of fear and i think if you can do that if you can find a way to um, uh, sort of uh, come out of of those shackles to to win over fear i think your performance will see a quantum leap uh, once that happens so yeah i think battling fear fear of failure is one of the greatest strength that any sports person can have that's that's very very well said uh, i think in ev- any walk of life everyone faces a certain amount of weakness and uh, we are all you know human beings after all so okay so tell hey, what what i mean to say what i mean to say is that uh, you cannot completely eliminate fear mm-hmm. from your uh, psyche because ultimately you're going out there performing uh, it's 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 your profession and you're expected to do well and you've put in the hard work and you have expectations out of your own so you cannot completely eliminate the fear of failure the fear of losing but it should not consume you my what i'm trying to say is that the fear should not consume you to such an extent that it sort of affects your performance a little bit of fear is good because it goes it's going to egg you on uh, it's going to a uh, motivate you to put your best foot forward because you know you want to excel at something but the fear of failure should not be regressive it should not pull you back and that's where you need to work on your mind and your psychology uh, at your training uh, you know to to make sure that fear and the fear of failure does not uh, sort of mingle with your performance uh, on the field or on the table or wherever you are whichever sports discipline you're playing in. No, no, very well said, Saurav. Uh, in fact, you know, we we so many times have this fear of outcome. We always, you know, think about you know outcome, and it definitely affects our performance because uh, then you, you know your your focus di- gets diverted, and you're not present in that moment at that time. So totally. Yeah, very well said. You're not present in the moment. You start thinking many steps ahead. You know, if I lose, what is going to happen? I'll go back home, and my father will scold me, or my mother will berate me. Uh, my coach is going to be so upset with me so you know the fear gives uh, a sort of a impetus to a chain reaction of thoughts and 
in turn, it's such a vicious cycle that in turn is going to impede you from peak performance. So the first step is to to sort of uh, you know nub the fear at its very root. You must go out there. The key is to enjoy. You know, uh, I constantly tell myself that if I lose, what's going to happen? Nobody's going to cut my arm or my leg. Uh, it's not that you know I'll be thrown away from my house. It's not that the people who are near and dear to me, the people who love me, are going to judge me because I could not perform. So, if you see the macro aspect of of this fear, it's actually nothing but in your mind, and you have to constantly tell yourself that I'll continue to get opportunities in my life. I'll continue to get chances to prove myself. This is not the end of the world. And the moment you can tell yourself that this is not the end of the world, I think, I think you will sort of have won the battle over fear. Very well said. Uh, again, sort of. Um, so uh, I'm sure. I mean, so many people they get this pre-game anxiety also. I mean, that is absolutely real. And so, so how does one tackle that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the butterflies in the stomach is something that uh, you can never avoid. It's not just with sport. I think even if you're walking into an interview for a for a job, you will get butterflies in your stomach. Uh, it comes from confidence. Uh, it the the you can you can win over the butterflies in your stomach with uh, winning, but again it's a cycle. You know you need to start winning first, and you need to get uh, uh, find a way to deal with the butterflies. Personally, I feel that a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress, the butterflies in the stomach. It I think it sort of augurs well. It it as I said, it helps you put your best foot forward. You're not going to take your life easily. You're not going to uh, be uh, sort of uh, indifferent about what you're going to do. So you know that you know you're on your guard and you need to put your best foot forward. But again, as I said, that the anxiety and the stress uh, cannot consume you. It cannot make your hand shake. If I'm playing a game of billiards, if I'm playing the final of a world championship, and if I go onto the table and I find that my hand is shaking, that means that I have not been able to win over these butterflies, over this fear. So the constant endeavor of uh, a sports person should be not just uh, the practice in the sport, but also practice in the mind, uh, developing a strategy, developing a lifestyle, developing a mental habit, which will help you cope with these butterflies. So the butterflies are going to be there. As I said, the anxiety, the, the stress of performance, it's always going to be there, but you have to find a mechanism that it doesn't overwhelm you, it does not consume you, so that the effort that you put in in your practice, you know, the the kind of work that you put in your practice, you can replicate it in in uh, on the field in the match table. So again, it's personal. I think uh, it go, it's get it it has a lot to do with what you tell yourself, uh, how you talk to yourself, what you tell yourself on a daily basis makes a big difference. If I tell myself oh my God, this is the end of the world for me. If I lose this, I'm gone. You know, my life is going to be shattered. Then your body will start processing that information and then you'll go to the table or you go to the field and it will become a matter of life and death for you. You know, there's a very, uh, it's, it's a very common thing. You know, surgeons, uh, you know, they, they say like it's proverbial, they should not operate on their own child. It's because their hands will shake. So, uh, the, the, the idea is, to talk to yourself. The idea is to get hold of a of a coach or a mental mental expert who can drill this into you that life does not come to an end when you lose. Life does not come to an end when you don't play well. Of course, we must learn lessons, but um, each time that we go out there to perform, we must enjoy ourselves, and that's one of the key to battling the demons and battling these fear and the anxiety of. Uh, Competitive match play, I think. No, no, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So, what is your way of dealing with it? So, you, you know, can you, um, you know, suggest any anecdotes that you have? Like, I was you know, pathetic at this. Honestly, I used to make everything a matter of life and death, and I used to be like, you know, oh my God, what's going to happen? And, you know, my world's going to come crashing down on me, and my parents are going to be so upset with me, and people are going to judge me. I was always touted as one of the most talented cues in, in the country. But I was not doing justice to my talent. Uh, I was not winning as often as I should have been winning. I was not uh, being able to replicate my practice game in, in tournaments. 
and then suddenly one day a realization dawned on me which i've shared with you that you, know, you cannot make matters you, you cannot make things a, a matter of life and death at the end of the day it's it's a part of your life it's not your entire life uh, the world is made up of beautiful things there are beautiful experiences uh, of course it is our profession it is my profession and it needs the due diligence and the due respect it does but at the end of the day it's a part of life you know it's not what defines me entirely so when you go with that thought when you when you go to the the field or the table with that thought that i will put my best foot forward but i'm not going to kill myself over something and this happens once you know i was playing the asian billiards championship in 2014 and up till then i was not really doing very well for myself i had won the national title by then but in the asian championship i was playing the quarter final match and i was 3-1 down in a best of 7 and i was playing with my opponent and you know i i had no hopes of winning because i was not playing well my opponent was playing exceedingly well that's when when i was sitting in my chair and i was watching my opponent play and i just a realization dawned on me that if i lose what's going to happen you know i started thinking in that way i'm going to be out of the tournament i will go back home i'm still going to go back home to my lovely parents i'm still going to go back have some lovely wonderful people in my life i still have an opportunity i've got my arms my legs intact i have the opportunity to build my skill to work even harder and come back more stronger and that's it you know i i just realized that why am i making such a big fuss about one tournament it's very important you know winning everyone wants to win everyone wants to do well but at the end of the day opportunities will always come and that's when my opponent missed a shot and i went into the table a completely different man uh there was no stress there was no anxiety it was as if i had almost given up hopes of winning and i was just going there to complete the formalities and you won't believe it garima i played like a man possessed wow. i mean it was just incredible i was flowing you know i was flowing so well i was playing just the way i play in practice no stress no care in the world just bothered about the means and not the goal and i won that match and i went on wow. to win the asian title super so uh, that scripted that a, a new mindset. chapter in my life mm. i came back home the biggest victory for my for me that day was not the asian title but this realization that a it's not a matter of life and death no matter what you do you know b you've got to enjoy i don't know if it works with other athletes but with me uh if i'm not enjoying if i'm taking too much stress too much pressure of performance i just fail i crumble so that day i realized that i'm not going to make things a matter of life and death i'm going to go out there and enjoy every time i'm there I'm going to put my best foot forward I'm not going to kill myself over the stress that i have to win you know win winning is 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 an illusory thing you have to work with the means and the means is to play to execute one shot after another with as much uh, skill and grace that you can and win is a by product So the moment you can uh, make winning a byproduct of your hard work, you'll just—I think you'll just flow, and that's what happened with me, and that changed my entire life. And after that, I went on to win the world title. I won the Arjuna Award, and believe me, every time I've gone out there, most most of the times, I, I cannot—I I have to admit, I cannot say all the time because it's your mind after all. You know, it, sometimes it plays tricks on you, but most of the times, I try to go out there and play as if. you know i i am there to enjoy the game i am i'm there to have a good time i'm there to uh, relish these opportunities and automatically the game sort of blossoms and my 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 skill i can i can play up to my you know 80 85% of my of my uh, aptitude so i think that's the key i think for me that has changed my perspective towards uh, sports super super sounds amazing so tell me sort of so if you if you could meet your younger self who is striving to be where you are today what is that one piece of advice that you would give to him or her uh i think i would tell myself uh, uh going back in time uh, the one thing that i would want to change is that uh, we often put in a lot of hard work we put in a lot of hours which i used to do i used to put in 10 12 hours on the table initially the formative years the first 4 5 years uh 
I used to do things in the way they were supposed to do. But in the middle, when I sort of lost my way, I realized that I was putting in the hours. There was no distraction. I was putting in eight hours, 10 hours every day, but I was not doing it in the right way. You know, there is, there is one thing that you work hard and there is one thing you work hard in the right way. So we often sort of jumble up. We, a lot of parents ask me, you know, my son is putting in 10 hours a day. Why isn't he getting results? Because your son is not putting in 10 hours in the right direction. So if I continuously, if I'm doing something wrong, even if I'm doing it for 10 hours, I'm not moving forward. So uh, if I were to go back, I would probably try and do certain things in the right manner. Uh, certain practice routines, certain drills, that uh, which I you kept doing, but I was doing them in the wrong way. Can you please tell us what what drill is that? Any any kind of uh, you know? Well, it's just you know it's very technical. It's the practice schedules that you have on the table. Uh, I was not doing them the right way. I was I was practicing, as I said, I was playing ten hours a day. I was playing eight hours a day. I was living, eating, breathing, sleeping, snooker, and billiards. But a certain in a certain time frame, I was not doing it in the right direction. You know, so, what is so the right uh, I mean, but like, well, it's just, you, it's just about, that? it's, it's, well, I was, I was practicing in a certain way, which was not really yielding results for me. Uh, it, it could be the drills that you do on the table. It could be the shots that you practice. Uh, it's very important to do things in the right way. And, uh, that's when, you know, a coach comes into play. Uh, there were, sometimes what happens is if you start doing something incorrectly without knowing that you're doing it, it sort of creeps into your system insidiously and it becomes a habit. And that's where a coach comes into play. That's when my father came into play. And uh, yeah, I started spending more time with him and I realized uh, that uh, I was doing certain things in the wrong way at the practice table. So I changed all of that. I went back to the basics. Uh, I I changed a bit of my practice routines and everything. And yeah, I started getting results. So, uh, and, and that's when my father became the coach of the Indian team. He had more time in his hands because he had uh, stopped playing uh, competitive billiards and I could get more time from him. And that's when, you know, I was spending more and more time on the table with him. And that's when I realized that, you know, I was not doing these things correctly. I was doing it in the wrong way. So, uh, yeah, that also changed a lot of uh, things in my life. And ultimately, these things add up to make you the, the sports person that you are. Wonderful. So, uh, what are the three things that you would like to say to the aspiring athletes? The three things I would like to say to an inspiring athlete is, one would definitely be to not make things a matter, not 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 make the game the sport a matter of life and death i would tell them to enjoy the process and work with the means a lot of us stop working with the means you know we start seeing the goal from the very beginning parents will come up to you and, and say ki bhai mera beta world champion kab banega mera beta national champion ban sakta hai kya are bhai aap mehnat to karai hai so we don't work with the means unfortunately we set a goal and then we see how we can somehow reach there but it doesn't work like that you know the goal is illusion it's it's good to have dreams it's good to have ambition but i would like to tell the youngsters to work with the means and by means i say having a disciplined life working hard on your core competence working hard on 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 that sport or that dream that you have but the work hard part is important not the goal so that's one thing I would tell them. And I would also tell something to the, the, the parents of the children, you know, to not put pressure on their children. A lot of, you know, I know that there may be maybe a million billiards and snooker players in the world who are probably far more talented than I am, but they'll never hold a cue stick in their life. Because, uh, you know, number one, opportunities don't come easy. And the second thing is that parents have so much expectations out of their words. Uh, I face it on a daily basis, you know, people asking me, how long will it take my, 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 my son or my daughter to become a champion? That's a ridiculous question because even God doesn't know the answer for that. Depends on so many things, but parents want results in such a fast paced, competitive world. They're like, you know, will my son or my daughter be able to do it? If not, okay, I'll shift them to this. It doesn't work like that. Success doesn't come easy. 
it's a lot of hard work perseverance i've been playing for 25 years and even now i feel you are a champion garima you would know that you don't go out and have a good day every day so uh, it's such a tough tough world out there so parents need to stop putting pressure my parents thankfully they never and my father is a world champion you know he he could have easily put a lot of pressure on me every time i came back from a tournament after losing i never heard any kind of dismaying words or you know like Uh, discouraging words from my parents never ever i came back and my father only insisted work hard work hard mehnat karo koi baat nahi haar gaye koi baat nahi but ha if you don't do mehnat if you don't do hard work then i would be scolded what is this this is not this is not done you have to go out there and work hard results they never bothered about never never i was i put under pressure that you have to perform you have to win you have to win. i started winning much later in my life so now i'm thinking that if my parents had constantly pestered me why aren't you doing well why aren't you doing well why aren't you doing well? i don't think i would have done well so i think i would like to tell the parents to take it easy give your children the time and the space because it's not easy it's a very competitive world everyone is trying to you know get to the top that's a very important so yeah that's my thing and yeah. and yeah one more thing is never leave academics oh i think oh. it's very very uh, it's not impossible to pursue both the things if you love sport if you are really good at something you should go all out uh, with the support of your parents your uh, your coaches you should go all out but i feel that education is very important and i realize the importance of this through my parents my father is a mechanical engineer a gold medalist and yet he won the world title wow uh, i completed my uh, masters in business, business administration i completed my education and i still managed to do uh, you know relatively well in my career as a sports person and i think everyone can i think education is very important especially in our indian society and i think that not just for the sake of education because it uh, builds character it keeps you undistracted from the other things you know the the distractions that society throws at us uh, if you're involved with studies and your sport i think you're pretty much disciplined because you know you don't have space for anything else in life a lot of youngsters today who get good at sport they just feel oh i don't want to study anymore but uh, that leaves you space for other distractions to come in i, I mean everything is good look hmm. we we are not looking at making robots out of people here it's good to go watch movies it's good to go to a park it's good to go to a club it's good to go dancing or whatever you want i think we can sort of fit in a lot of things in our life 24 hours is a long time and i think education is very important and uh, parents and children should not undermine its influence in the overall growth of a person this sounds amazing um, thanks so much uh, for that um, it it was such a valuable advice uh, saurav and with this we come to the end of this uh, discussion Thank you, Sarah, you. Uh, for joining me in this episode and sharing your Thank experience you and expertise uh, with our listeners. And I wish you all the best for your podcast. And <laughs> I hope you get more insightful information and uh, sort of you know a, 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 an idea of how sports persons think and how they function. I mean, it's a vast world out there. So, um, and I'm sure your road has just started with this podcast. And I wish you all the best uh, in the coming days. Thank you very much and thank you for uh, listening to today's episode with your host Garima Aftar. If you like this episode then subscribe to my podcast for more new episodes and a deeper dive into the world of motivation and sports psychology. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.